let's see if it works. Okay. Okay. I guess it works. Oof, I was ready to to stop <laughs> and not do anything today because um couldn't connect iPad couldn't connect to anything. So last minute here trying. Please let me know in the chat if you hear me and if you see the screen properly. It's working, I see you're saying. Oh, thank goodness. I was so nervous because I promised everyone and uh, then would be really rude <laughs> to to not do it. Oh, okay. I'm messing things up again. Uh, so let's wait another minute real quick for more people to join. I didn't even prepare a glass of water. Um, are you going to make a Discord? What is a Discord? What is it? Captain Anne received a couple of my books from Amazon. I'm so happy. Thank you so much. Actually, unfortunately, in the previous edition of that vocabulary booster, there were, um, I think there was a couple of mistakes with QR codes. I think less than five and 15. I've corrected them. But if you still still got the older copy, please uh, email me and I will send you the updated uh, QR codes for videos. Uh, okay. Okay. If you need the PDF, I think I posted it uh, in the group on Telegram. T Real Russian Club 2021. I had to change the link because we received tons of spam messages there. And actually, I think I should make the text bigger here for today, right? Let's see. Mm-hmm. Would it be visible for grammatical explanations? Yeah, I hope it works. So, in this Telegram group, you can join and if you scroll up a little bit, uh, there you will find a PDF. Or you don't even have to scroll up. You can open this group. And um, I don't know if you'll be able to, to, to see. But on Telegram, if you go like that, the group here, you can pr click on the icon. And uh, there you can choose media choose files and there are all kinds of PDFs. There are all the books we are using in these lessons. Uh, so all the previous schmacks there, people share different worksheets for learning Russian. So join, join if you have Telegram. If you don't have install it, it's the best, best messenger ever. WhatsApp is uh, nothing compared to it, trust me. Alrighty, alrighty. Uh, very noisy air conditioning here. So, let's begin. We do a grammar lesson on the book we read last week about Schmack and uh, Cinderella. But actually, it is called Schkolny uh, Spektakel. The word spektakel I think it comes from the word spectacle. Spectacle means the show, theater show. Uh, Schola, I hope you remember that from the nouns we can create adjectives. We simply add this u, which makes it um, a uh, masculine ending of an adjective. So I'm so slow today. <laughs> Okay, uh, so this is uh, what we're gonna do today. Schkolny spektakel. Let's move it here. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you're seeing this properly. If not, let me know. 
because I really want it to be visible for everybody. So, Katyata, we already had it. Uh, it's plural. Uh, it comes from the... Why is it red? Let's put it in black. Plural and an exception. One kitten would be Katyonak. Many kittens would be Katyata. Katyata. So when it comes to those uh, animal cubs, animal children, there are uh, exceptions, like the horse child, je, no, sorry, Jiribionak. But again, it would be Jiribata. Very rarely used word, but who knows. Shinok, a puppy. So you can say Shinki or Shinata. So it doesn't, uh, doesn't matter that much. I just want you to understand that it means kittens, plural form. Is klasa. Is klasa. You probably know the word class. Class means uh, the class as a group of students in school. By the way, at the university, it's not a class anymore. So it's only for, for schools. Class. And if we say is, it means from. We use genitive case. We add a. Is klasa. Genitive. Mm -hmm. From the class. Is klasa. Is universitet. Da. Is Rasiyi. So these would be all endings of the genitive case. When you say that you're from somewhere, from somewhere, um, we use genitive. We use genitive case. Is klasa Shmiaka. Now we speak about this thing. This thing. And surprisingly, we would use genitive again. When we speak about possession, we would say it in genitive. Whose class is that? Class Shmiaka. Again, this would be genitive case. Genitive case. Or let's say live. <laughs> this is so strange. It means like live. Uh, we have the long word, and actually, it's not even a Russian word anyway, so whatever. Let's use this neologism. Uh, transliatsia. Transliatsia is not a Russian word, too. So, life daryi. Daryi. Genitive case of my name. Whose live? Live video of Daria. In Russian, we would show it uh, with um, genitive case. A tail of a cat. Kata. Kata. Let's say a bag. Sumka mamy. Sumka mamy. Or sumka of my, I don't know, friend, girlfriend. Padrugi. Padrugi. Don't forget about those uh, seven letters that we don't write u after. That's why sometimes uh, you will see e instead of the u. Mm -hmm. So it's all genitive. Katyata is klasa shmyaka. Dayut. Dayut. Here, let's dwell a little bit. Because the infinitive would be davat. Davat. But when it comes to change in this world, let's say они дают. It means to give. Uh, literally means they're given the show. They are presenting a show in a theater. But it can be to give in general, like I'm giving you my phone. Oh, thank you so much for your support, for your donations. Спасибо большое. Спасибо. So it can literally mean давать. Я даю. Телефон. Here you go. I'm given the phone. Da you. But this is a super common mistake. My son makes it uh, all the time. 
So logically, based on other verbs like работать, работаю, отдыхать, отдыхаю. Uh, so our initial reaction would be to say я даваю, right? Remember, we replaced uh, t, the infinitive ending, with you. Not with these. This va runs away very frequently. For example, to dance. Танцевать. And my son, he is seven years old. Even now, when he is seven and he speaks perfect Russian, his vocabulary is like... For his age, he's like a really good speaker. And still, he would sometimes forget and say... Танцеваю, танцеваешь. This is not correct. It should be танцую. For example, я танцую, он танцует, они танцуют. Same with давать, дают, они дают. Plural ending here, они дают. Представление для, для. Remember... This uh, для means for, for, for someone, for something. So here they're given this uh, show uh, for a school theater, for a school theater. Для театра, для театр, а. Again, for something, we would use... Um, God, genitive case again. For the theater. Для театра. For a friend. Для друга. Для друга. For Daria. Для Дарьи. For, uh, what else? For the house. Some cleaning chemical for the house. Для Дома. Or for an apartment. Для квартиры. So here we would use genitive. Для школьного театра. Again, pay attention to the pronunciation. Школьного we spell. However, it sounds like школьного. Школьного. We reduce the vowels. Uh, these are not stressed. Школьного, школьного театра. This is the ending for the adjective in genitive case. Школьного театра. Uh, future. How do we show future? Будет. It will be. It's in general. It will be something. Это будет Okay, let's say as in a book. Spectacle. It will be a show based on the Cinderella. Это будет спектакль. If we want to say, this will be on Friday. Это будет в пятницу. Or, it would be, it will be amazing. Да? Это будет супер. Это будет супер. Um, yeah, this is one of the ways of show, showing the future tense. Future tense. I'm not sure. Did we do a lesson about future tense or we just covered the past? Future tense is pretty complicated in Russian. Way more difficult uh, than uh, past tense. So, спектакль по сказке. По сказке. Here, по сказке, we would use a dative case. Сказка is a fairy tale, folk tale, сказка. But in dative, dative, we change the ending to е. Сказка, сказки. По сказке, with this preposition, по. For example, on the road, like down the road. So this по can have several meanings. Down the road, on the road, по дороге. 
Again, the in the nominative would be дорога, but по дороге, по дороге. По сказке means that it is based on this on this fairy tale. Золушка. Золушка is Cinderella. Cinderella. Oh, some questions. I read that YouTube will be banned from Russia. Is that true? They've been promising to ban it a long time ago, and every year they're trying because of the political stuff. Because they ask, they demand YouTube to delete some anti government stuff, and YouTube refuses. So, okay, next. Юные uh, актеры. Plural, plural. Let's take the word actor, actor. And uh, is the stream pre-recorded? No, I'm here. I'm here right now talking. So this is one of my favorite topics, making plurals. Actor. Sometimes we simply, uh, simply add u. Actor. If it's masculine, actor, actori, kot. Коты, plural, cat, cats, actor, actors, коты. Uh, if it comes to uh, feminine nouns, мама, мамы, мамы. Or if it's a soft ending, it turns to e. For example, a family, семья, семьи, e. Because there is a main rule that hard changes to the hard, soft changes to the soft anyway. Ya, i, a, u. And again, for example, kniga, kniga. But we never put u after g. So we would say knigi, books. Knigi, beautiful books. Красивые, красивые книги. Красивые книги. Okay, so it, it's plural. Актеры. Young actors. Юные актеры. Надевают. Надевают. This is a cool rule, but uh, even Russian people, everyone makes this mistake for some reason. We study it at school. Надевать. It means... To put, oops, I think I missed, um, yeah, uh, put on, надевать. However, we have the second verb, одевать, put on or dress someone. So what's the difference? This надевать, надевать, it means that you are taking some objects and you are putting it on yourself. For example, you're taking a hat. Nadivat shlapu. Nadivat shlapu. Or nadit nadivat achki. Putting on glasses. Or like in this book, they are putting on costumes. Look at the picture. They are putting some clothing on uh, themselves. Adivat this one. Adivat means to put on clothing on someone else, to dress somebody else. Uh, so, adivat ribionka, adivat ribionka, to dress a child, to dress a child, adivat ribionka. So, you're putting clothes on somebody else, adivat and nadivat. But again, this is. This is one of the mistakes that Russian people make all the time. Okay, what is interesting here too? На сцену. На сцену. Yes, Slava is bringing that example, but again... Одеть надежду. Надеть одежду. It's only understandable to... Russians. For foreigners, it's... Um, yeah, so Nadezhda is a Russian name. You see it's spelled from the capital letter. So you are dressing Nadezhda 
And you are putting on clothes. Одежда. Надеть надежду, надеть одежду. But again, don't even bother. Don't even bother. I just wanted you to know. So this is some inner Russian circle kind of a mistake. Okay. Okay, what else? Выйти на сцену. That's what I wanted to to show you. На сцену. На сцену. One second. На сцену. And we already... Uh, we already said it... Uh, told about accusative case. Yeah? Accusative. And about the verbs of uh, direction and the verbs of location. So, accusative case, we use the same noun as the prepositional. However, they are going to this... Uh... Oh, by the way, how do you call scena in English? This... Um... Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Scena. Scena is this actual wooden thing where actors are performing. How do you call it? It's definitely not seen. Seen? Somebody, I hope, t tells me in the chat. So the infinitive would be scena. Let's put it here. Scena. Uh, stage. Yes, thank you, Mike. Stage. Scena. On the stage where some performance is happening. So this is the infinitive uh, word um, uh, form that you find in the dictionary. Prepositional. For example, the actors are already on the stage would be на сцене. They are already there on the stage. Already standing on it. Here we would use prepositional case. Prepositional case. Let's. Whoa. What's going on? Prepositional. Accusative case. You see, the preposition here is the same, but it's direction. It's direction. They're just planning to go there. They're not there yet. So we would use accusative na scenu. Na scenu. Again, library. If it's already in the library. There are many books in the library. So we would say в библиотеке. Библиотеке. Prepositional. So inside the library building there are many books. They're already there. But I go to the library. I'm going, I'm walking. It's direction. We use accusative. I'm going to the library. I'm not inside the building yet. I'm just moving there, kind of approaching the library. Here we would use accusative. So that's the difference. Don't let this same preposition confuse you. Okay? Na, na, v, v. So the difference is if you are already there or you're just going there in general. That's the general difference. Okay, uh, moving on. Let's move to the next page. Do you see the text? I guess you don't. Let me move it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think now it's better visible like that. Okay, what else uh, we see here? grammatically. Uh, another verb, but I would like you to pay attention to this past tense. So how to form past tense. We use l for masculine words and la for feminine and uh, li for plural and uh, let's put it here neutral. La, lu, li. For example, to announce, to announce, like here, it would be abjivit in infinitive. Remember, when you see t in the ending, it's infinitive. It means the form that you will see infinitive. 
infinitive. I hope I'm spelling it right. So if you see this, it means to a noun in general. So this you will see in a dictionary. However, let's say on объяви, and to make it past, we replace t with l. Он объявил. This is how we make past tense in Russian. But feminine, look at this, la. Она объявила. With feminine uh, nouns, it's pretty easy to remember because you see, она, we have a in the ending, and with all the, not all the, but a lot of uh, feminine words, they will have this a or ya sometimes endings. Девочка, кошка, Наташа. So you see, perm, perm. so this is why we use la. La, this is pretty easy to remember. Ano, ano, pretty simple too. Ano объявило, объявило. And uh, plural, guess what? I, I, они объявили, они объявили. So this is how you uh, make it past tense in Russian. Super simple. So here, Mrs. Puchlis. Mrs. Puchlis. You see her on the picture. Uh, she is the Schmack's teacher. This one, teacher. So Mrs. That's why we use the feminine form. It's Anna Abivila. Anna Abivila. And here, lower, we have other examples. Zanavis means the curtain ends on a consonant, so it makes it masculine. So here we see this masculine L. L. Поднялся. Ся is about reflexive verbs. We talked about it um, last time. Oh, but uh, let's do this and finish with past tense. Зажглись. So again, this is past tense because огни lights. Огни, it's plural. Огонь, singular. Огни lights, plural. Зажглись. Зажглись. So E, E again. E, E. Right? So it's pretty easy to, to remember. And here, let me change the color a little bit. You remember in the previous page we had uh, we had na scenu the actors are planning to go to the stage here this blue we have prepositional case because on the stage the lights were lit so it's already on the stage you see they are already here this is the stage here so they're already there, we use prepositional. So hopefully it's clear. The next one, the next one. Poor Cinderella, poor Cinderella. Oh, what else can we see in terms of grammar here? Обижать ее, ее. After some verbs, we use certain cases. Обижать, remember we talked about it in the reading lesson, it was uh, to abuse someone. So we would use accusative case when you are abusing someone, which I hope you don't <laughs> do, uh, we would use accusative. Обижать, whoa, Обижать, I don't know, сына, to abuse your son, обижать сына. This is the accusative case ending. Or, обижать, a girlfriend, подругу, подругу, подругу. 
accusative case ending. Here we have ее, ее. This is a personal pronoun, она, она, ее, обижать, ее. So in accusative case, the personal pronouns, they changed. Он, его, она, ее, они, их, right, их. So, обижать ее, обижать его, обижать их. Everything changes into accusative. Uh, what else uh, interesting here? Не дают отдохнуть. Here, I guess you know everything. How to make a negation. Negation. Negation in Russian is pretty simple. You simply add не. Не работать. Not to work. Не читать. Not to read. Не есть not to eat. And again, the, grammatically, this is one of the problems for a lot of Russian speakers. So normally, in most situations, you would put a break here. Yeah, a little space. Не space работать. Не читать. Не есть. However, some verbs would be going together. Ненавидеть. It means to hate, to hate. Again, uh, this is mostly for advanced level, for advanced level. How to check if it's uh, space or not. Can you use this verb without не? Не работать. Is it, does it make sense? Работать, yes. Ненавидеть. You can't say навидеть, this word doesn't exist in Russian. But this is how native speakers check the spelling. For foreigners, you don't know if this word exists in Russian, right? You, you can't predict. Russians instantly know, like, mm, this word doesn't make sense without не. So it means we write it together. But for you, again, just don't bother. Don't bother. Just write it separately and, uh, and you'll be fine. Doesn't matter. Also, here, не дают отдохнуть. We have this negation and uh, double words. Дают, we already uh, had it as given, давать. Remember, давать. Uh, but also, it sometimes me can mean to let something. Не давать, not to let something hap to happen. Or not to allow something. For example, my parents don't allow me to play computer. Родители, parents, не дают. It means they don't allow you. Не дают играть в компьютер. My parents don't let me play the computer. Не дают играть. So, we have two verbs together. And I think we talked about it last time. This is very common that you change only the first word and the second one goes in infinitive in infinitive just like in english they don't let me to play this is infinitive to play играть 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 so this verb we change because parents are plural parents не дают this one we don't change because it's just the infinitive form. Не дают играть. Okay, something more interesting. Mm -hmm. More past tense here. Let me get rid of this. More past tense uh, in this one. And again, negation. You see, не взяли. Не взяли. Взять means to take. To take. And uh, они, они, plural, не взяли. Again, you see, и, и. Они не взяли. Easy to remember. Plural, plural. Feminine, feminine. 
Oh, so they didn't take her to the ball. Na ball. Na ball. And in the palace. At the palace, we use the prepositional case. Prepositional case. Hmm. Yeah, some somebody correcting my English. So yeah, but I guess you got the idea. You would change uh, the first verb. For example, let's get rid of uh, the. Uh, Plural, родители. Let's say he, он, uh, wants to play. So you only change this verb, right? You only change this first verb. To play stays an infinitive. To play. You don't change he wants place, right? He wants plays. He wants walks. He wants eats. You don't say it like that. He wants to eat. He wants to go. He wants to play. Same in Russian. Он хочет играть. So we change only this this first verb. But this one will stay unchanged. That's what I meant. But in English it's not as obvious because sometimes you don't change this one too. Like they want so, yeah, not all the time you change your verbs, which makes English so much, so much better than Russian in terms of grammar. Okay, moving on, moving on. Prepositional. Mm -hmm. Prepositional. What else? Past tense. We described она заплакала, feminine ending, la, села, so we already talked about it. And uh, what else? Basically, basically, we kind of cover so much. The grammar in these books, they are, oh, it is um, pretty simple. You see almost no new grammatical stuff. Again, в облачке, prepositional case, because inside of this white cloud, в облачке, then again we have a genitive case. We already talked about genitive. Again, we have past tense. She appeared, появилась. Добрая, again, it's добрый uh, is masculine, добрая is feminine, добрая фея. Добрый uh, means kind, nice, kind or nice, kind, nice, good, добрый. So добрый, let's say, I don't know, добрый. Who? Who can be super kind? Let's say добрый учитель, some school teacher who is super nice. And uh, добрая бабушка, some kind, nice uh, бабушка, granny, grandmother, добрая. So masculine ending, feminine ending. Or good morning, доброе утро. Доброе утро. In Russian, it means like kind morning, nice morning, good morning. When you greet somebody <coughs> in the morning. Okay. What else? Again, был. It was сырник. This is masculine ending. So pretty much everything. Oh, here finally something new comes. Let me make it a little bit like that. Instrumental case comes. First of all, again, past tense. Fea is feminine. Vzmachnula. La. 
this past tense feminine ending. And here comes the instrumental case in all this <laughs> glory of this meaning as an instrument of something. So she uh, waved with this wand. So this is the instrument of her movement. Yeah, she's waving her wand. This we use uh, the instrumental case. Palachkai. The infinitive would be palachka. And last week, remember, I told you it was um, a little stick in Russian. Uh, wand is a little stick. Palachka. In instrumental case, Oh, uh, it would be palachkai, palachkai. For example, to write with a pen, pisat, pisat ruchkoi, yeah, ruchkai, pisat ruchkai, palachkai. What did she do? Vzmachnula. No, vzmach. Нуть палочкой, писать ручкой. Or, let's say, есть палочками, plural, plural here, to eat with uh, sticks. How do you call those? <coughs> Is it called sticks? And when you go to some Asian restaurant, you eat with sticks, палочками. So when something is an instrument in your hands, here it's this magical wand, this is an instrument. We use instrumental case. Instrument, instrumental. So hopefully it's easy, easy to remember. Chopsticks. Yes, chopsticks. Thank you, Michael. Спасибо. Okay, uh, what else? What else interesting here? Again, we have genitive case as possession. Платье золушки. Платье золушки. Платье золушки. Remember, possession. This is genitive case. Address of Cinderella. Remember that tail of a cat. Хвост. Kata. Pizza Italy. Well, Italy, like pizza of Italy. Pizza Italy is the best. Lutschaya. Yeah. Pizza Italy. What else? Something interesting. Vkanih. Hmm. Another example here of the difference between prepositional and accusative. So, you see, she sat, она села, into the carriage. Into the carriage. So, she is sitting into this. She is kind of getting into. This would be accusative because it's the direction of her movement. And now she is already sitting Inside the carriage, it would be в карете. She's already inside. She shuts the door. She's sitting in. Карете. В карете. За кулисами. За кулисами. Кулисы, again, is the... Uh, curtain. The theater curtain. This large thing that covers the actors. За кулисами. So, after за, we would use um, instrumental too. It means behind something. For example, behind the house. За домом. Or behind the car. За машиной. За машиной. A uh, question in the chat. Uh, do you use this case, meaning instrumental, playing actual instruments? Uh, you mean musical instruments? 
musical instruments. Oh, no, no, with the instruments, remember, I think last time I told you we use the preposition there. На, на. Играть на гитаре. На гитаре. And you already know that this preposition can be a prepositional case or a accusative. And even with these musical instruments, let's look uh, at the a couple of examples. So, to play the guitar, играть на гитаре. But let's use the word guitar, guitar, as somebody's direction. Let's say муравей, meaning ant, ant, ant. By the way, человек муравей, ant man, the Marvel superhero would be ant man. Человек муравей, long name in Russian, человек муравей. So let's say the ant is crawling on the guitar. На гитару. На гитару. So he is crawling and his destination, his dream location is this guitar. So this little ant is climbing, crawling. На гитару. So this is his destination, the direction of his movement. So we would use accusative case. Accusative case. This is a stupid example, but even with the musical instruments, this this logical difference would change the case. Guitaru, guitare. Okay. And the word guitara can be used in. Uh, uh, in instrumental. Let's say he was beating his friend with the guitar. It means he took the guitar and he is smashing somebody with this guitar. He's beating. In this case, a guitar is the instrument of his aggression, right? So he's beating him. In that case, guitar would be an instrumental case. Guitaroy. Guitaroy. Super confusing, I know. That's why learning Russian takes so much time. But it's fascinating, isn't it? It's fascinating how the difference in actions changes the words. It's it's really cool. It's really cool. Okay. Oh, this word, что-то, что-то. This что-то. So, how to make uh, something, something, you probably know the word что, meaning some, something like some, what, что, like what is it, что это. So, something, we add this то, что-то, что-то. Something interesting, что-то интересное. If you want to say someone, Someone, we would say, кто та, кто та. So just add this when you don't know who or what, or somewhere, somewhere. Wow, random Russian. Somewhere, somewhere. Guess what? If you know the word where in Russian, you'll be able to make it. Где-то. Когда-то. Sometime. Когда-то. Sometime. Когда-то. From somewhere. Откуда-то. Откуда-то. So this to at the ending, it adds this... Uh, Unknownness, if I may say so. Unknownness. <coughs> кто либо, кто либо. Don't make it worse. Don't make it worse. Let's stay with то for today. Don't, don't make it more difficult for people. 
Okay, what else? Um, yeah, shipu, shipu, ship. Shipu dostalась roll. This is dative case again in this uh, direct meaning of dative. Dative case when you give something to someone. So roll the roll. Uh, it means ship. It's his name. Ship. Uh, he was given the role of prince. Dostalas role princa. So when you give something to someone, that someone will be in dative. Let's say, я даю телефон другу. So this друг will be in dative case. I'm giving my phone to my friend. So you see, in Russian, we don't have this to. We don't have any preposition here between them. So how to understand who gives the phone to who? In Russian, we use cases to show this. Другу. Другу. Mm -hmm. Or here, ship is his name. Dative case, шипу. Шипу. Okay, moving on. Again, на сцене, prepositional case, remember? On the stage, that's why we use this е ending. На сцене. Here, again, we have this uh, negation. Не могу. Не могу. Не могу means I can't. By the way, very useful, very useful verb. Speaking of a guitar, я не могу играть на гитаре. I can't play the guitar. Не могу играть. Or, would you like to go to, uh, I don't know, movie theater? Я сегодня не могу. I can't today. Today I can't. I'm busy. Mm -hmm. Or, I can't understand. Не могу понять. I don't understand. Instrumental case. Я не могу. Skipped. Не. Я не могу понять творительный падеж. I can't understand the instrumental case. So, yeah, negation plus, again, this infinitive. Не могу выступать. So, we changed only first verb. The second one stays in infinitive. And you can replace it with anything. Не могу встать. I can't get up. Can't wake up in the morning. Не могу встать. Не могу найти. I can't find something. Like, where? where is my phone? I can't find my phone. Не могу найти телефон. Не могу говорить. Like, somebody calls you and you're like, shh, I can't talk. Не могу говорить. So very useful. You can use it in so many situations. Just add the infinitive after this and uh, you'll be fine. Okay, uh, what else? Uh, uh, ой! Ой! Very useful exclamation. This ой! I use it all the time and I always forget that uh, I think in English-speaking countries you don't use it. Like, oops, oh, hmm. In Russian we would use oi. When you lost something, when you hit your elbow on the chair, like, oi. Mm. There you would probably, Russian speakers <laughs> would would know what you, what you really say when you hit yourself, but I don't swear online. Uh, we use bad words when we hit our elbows or pinky toes. How do you call the pinky toe? The last little in Russian we call it mizinets. Mizinets. When you hit it on some furniture, oh, it's not good. So yeah, in Russian we would say oi. 
Oui. Uh, again, we see what? We see past tense, feminine, la. Remember, we covered it today. Let's click on la. Je, we already talked about this particle, and I still see it gets a lot of questions, kind of it provokes a lot of questions. So, the general meaning of this je, it's uh, emotion, emotional. It adds uh, atmosphere, it adds, adds uh, some fire. So, she is worried about this ship, he imitates the disease. She's worried about him. So what what can we do? What should we do? Что же делать? If she simply said что делать, it kind of as if she doesn't care. Like, oh, you're dying from some disease here. Okay. What what do we do? Any suggestions? So it would be almost rude. But here she shows emotion. Like, что же делать? What are we gonna do? Что же делать? Or, <clears throat> I don't know, somebody kicks you out of the house and where am I gonna go? Куда же я пойду? I'm lost, I am devastated. Куда же я пойду? Where, where am I gonna go? I'm, I'm gonna die on the streets. So this же adds emotions or you're eating something really delicious and you say как же вкусно oh my goodness this is the best cake i've ever eaten in my entire life как же вкусно how delicious как же вкусно so i guess you got the ma main idea uh mateo I hate particles. Yeah, so do I. They're, they're not cool. Very difficult to understand. But you see again how cool. You can add emotions and change the scenery completely by adding a simple je. It's incredible if you think about it. Not so incredible when you have to pass some exam on those particles. But yeah, yeah, in general it's cool. Okay. Moving on, this Shmyak in his adorable uh, costume. Again, we have um, past tense. Zadrajal. Zadrajal, by the way, these verbs come pretty fast. Pretty fast. Oh, pretty fast, not fast, frequently. Pretty frequently, often. Zadrajat infinitive. Uh, za about this uh, prefix. Most of the time, uh, not always, but most of the time, uh, it adds this meaning. Uh, it it's, it means uh, the beginning of something to start doing something. For example, here his tail started to tremble, like brrr, tremble. Uh, to shake from excitement and anxiety, I would say, volnini anxiety. So before that, it was not shaking, but za drajat means it's um, started to shake. Uh, spot you probably know. Za snut adds this meaning to fall asleep. Maybe you spend five hours in bed trying, kind of tossing and turning, and finally you started actual sleep. We would say za snut. For example, ya ligla spat of desit no za Well, let's go to this. No za snula v adinacit. Here. So, I went to bed, I kind of laid down at 10, but I fell asleep. So, I actually started sleeping at 11. Заснула в So, this за adds this, this starting meaning. 
Okay, anything more interesting? Kitty, Yemu, again, uh, dative case, dative case, we talked about it, when you're given something to someone. So here she is smiling, улыбаться. Kitty улыбалась, by the way, again, this past tense feminine, la. You see how we meet this literally on every single page, on every single page, very la. Sabral, сказал. So you see, this is a very important thing and pretty simple grammar rule. But if you learn it, you see how many times you're going to meet this this piece of grammar. So, улыбаться, улыбаться means to smile, to smile. And we use um, dative case here, as if she's given her smile to him. Yemu, yemu. Yemu is a personal pronoun. Он ему, она ей. Они им. So not only the nouns change, yeah, like улыбаться, шмяку, шмяку, but all the personal pronouns would change as well. Улыбаться ему, ему. All right. Or again, you see we have the same case here, yimu, and this literal meaning. Ship is given, given his costume to Shmyak. On Adal Yimu Shmyaku Dative case. Dative case. He's given it to Shmyak. Adal Yimu Svoy costume. And again. Past tense, adal, past masculine. Shmyak, what is, where is the text? Shmyak is not a horse anymore. Ne, konj. So we used negation with verbs before. Not to work, not to like. Also, you can use it with other, uh, uh, other, oh god. How do you call it? Noun, noun, verb, adjectives, what's the part of speech? How do you call it in English? In Russian we call it часть речи. Существительная – это часть речи, глагол – часть речи. So, in English I'm not sure. So, not a horse, не конь, не кот, не Москва. Like, you come to some small Russian town, half destroyed with poverty, uh, you will say, yeah, that's not Moscow, meaning, like, nothing compared to Moscow. Не Москва. Не я. Like, who did this? Not me. Not me. Не я. Не я. So you can use it with <coughs> anything. Uh, like... It's cold outside. No, it's not cold. Не холодно. So this is an adverb. Холодно, не холодно. Or it's beautiful, not beautiful. Не красивый. With these, you should be careful because um, because they wanted to. Oh, they wanted to. What's wrong with me today? I'm using just some random. Verbs out of nowhere. Uh, so sometimes you will see it again written together or with a space between them. But again, this is super advanced and a lot of Russian speakers still make those spelling mistakes. So don't don't pay too much attention to that. Okay, what else uh, there? Бал в королевском дворце. Again, we know all this grammar already. Prepositional case. Inside the palace. So you see they are already in the palace. They are inside the building. We use prepositional case. 
во дворце. Бал начался. Past tense masculine. This lonely l начался. Принц поклонился. He bowed. And remember, we, we used uh, to smile at someone using uh, dative case. Here, the same. They are... Uh, he's bowing to someone, to her. It's as if he's kind of given this bow to her. So this uh, idea of given brings this dative case again. Золушке. Золушке. Поклонился, улыбнулся. So, to Cinderella. Dative case. Золушке. Золушке. Okay. Some drama happening. Again, past tense. Они танцевали. И... И. Easy to remember. И, и, они танцевали. Друг с другом весь вечер не пробили. Negation plus past tense. Pretty cool topic is uh, the sounds. Those, uh, how you show different noises in, in Russian. I'm sure in English they would be different, like these boom, boom, boom. Like the sound of clock beating, boom, boom, boom. Or the knock on the door would be stuk, stuk, stuk. Or what else? Something falls on the floor would be bach. Or maybe boom, boom. So it's a pretty cool topic to talk about. What else? Again, uh, more feminine past tense. Ахнула, убежала. As for this у prefix. У uh, prefix. Mm, it means this getting out of somewhere. So, uh, бежать, бежать, the original one, to run, just to run in general, бежать. If we add у, it has this meaning that she runs away, to run away, убежать, убежать. Same with uh, driving, riding, уехать. <coughs> уехать из Москвы. To drive uh, from Moscow for a weekend. I don't know. Уехать. It means you're not in Moscow anymore. У -у. Okay. What is interesting here? За, again, instrumental case. За ней. Remember, за usually. In most situations, we would use instrumental за ней. And again, perfect for practicing past tense. Был, налетел, был, all, all the past tense. Схватился. So, if you master the... the, 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 the the past tense, you see how much you will be able to to cover. Декорации, again, plural, обвалились, и, и, plural, plural. Шмяк is not a common sound. Uh, it's, I, I guess, they are just playing with his name here, using his name as the sound of a fallen decoration, but... I've never heard it as, I don't know, outside these books. Never heard it. What else? What else? Больше всех. More than anyone. More than anyone. Больше, больше всех. Больше всех. And I guess that's uh, pretty much it. That's pretty much it. We covered 
a lot of uh, grammar, they have a lot of past tense here. Again, they laughed, they clapped, хлопали, they yelled, кричали. Представление не бывало. There was no such a performance before. Oh, the only thing we haven't covered today is this никогда не. Никогда не, something, something. In Russian, we use the double negation. And this is very confusing for a lot of English speakers. Because in English, if you use the word never, it already means a negation. I never go to work. Я никогда не хожу на работу. In Russian, we would use the same negation, but with не, никогда. I never work, let's say like that. Uh, so in English, you use never and work say stays positive. What is that noise? So Russian would basic. What is going on? It's like past nine. Who who's hammering something there? Mm. I never don't work. I never don't work. So it's bad grammar in English. It's bad grammar in English, but in Russian, uh, that's correct. I never don't work. Nikagda ne rabotu. So don't forget about it. Nikagda ne rabotu. Not just with never. No one, никто не любит, oh, I don't know, let's say vodka. Nobody likes vodka, and uh, which is this kind of true story. The stereotypes about Russians being obsessed with vodka, they're overly uh, overestimated. It would be funny if I'd be drinking vodka at the same time saying this, but... It's just water. So, you see, in English, you would say, no one likes. No one likes. In Russian, we say, no one doesn't like. So, it's double negation. Nikto ne lubit. Okay, uh, what else here? Shipnula, again, past tense. Shmyaku, um, again, it's dative case. So, to shmyak, she's given her whisper to his ear. And uh, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it for the book, you see. Uh, we covered uh, past tense. We covered, uh, what What else? Uh, negation. We covered masculine and feminine endings. Uh, so, a lot of stuff today. And uh, Again, what I love about Schmack books, it's repeatedly coming back in each and every every book. So once you clarify those grammatical things for you, the next book for you will be much easier to to understand. Okay, Whew. kinda out of out of breath. Thank you very much for working. I see some issues with uh, the quality. Um, is the quality okay? Do you have a tutorial on how to type faster in Russian? I wish I knew how to type faster. No, I don't know. There are all kinds of like typing schools and you no, know, I don't, can't help you here. Unfortunately, practice comes with practice. Uh, the more I spend time at my computer, the faster I start typing, eventually. So, uh, yeah, I see some warning on the screen. Please check the video resolution. The current resolution is not optimal. Okay, good to see that. <laughs> good to see that at the very end of the stream. Hopefully it was okay. Oh, quality is good. Okay, thank goodness I was worried. <clears throat> Okay. Сколько времени сейчас? Now it's 9.20. 
9.10 in the evening. In the evening. I see a lot of familiar faces. Federico. Federico. Well, it's been like... How long have you been? I think we talked some back in like 2016 or something. How How's it going? How's it going? Uh, for me, the quality shows 2240 on 1260. I don't know. For the first time I see this uh, announcement. Hopefully it's it's good. Okay. I don't know how to figure out and to make it look better, unfortunately. For some reason it's just maybe some some I don't know settings should be figured out. Unfortunately, I don't know. So do you have any questions for me before I'm finish and drinking my semi vodka looking <laughs> It's actually a pretty good water. It has 9.2 pH. Really cool. Do you have a tutorial on the letter R in Russian? R? Yes. If you type, uh, if you type how to roll your R in Russian, or how to trill R. I even have an online course for fifteen dollars. Uh, with exercises for your tongue and everything. My son is doing uh, speech therapy for, like, he had 15 classes already, and he still can't do this R sound. So if you still can't do the R, don't be frustrated. Even Russian speakers have to learn this sometimes. He has about 10 classes left. So hopefully he will learn how to do it. Now he uses this French R. Привет, работа, радость. And uh, ironically, his name is Roman. So Roma. Меня зовут Roma. <laughs> so he has to use this R a lot. So I really hope he he learns eventually. Okay. Okay. Time to time to sleep. Time to sleep for for me. Not not sleep. What is it? Zasnuć. Zasnuć. Time to fall asleep. I'm very sleepy. Not getting normal sleep for for days. <sighs> because uh yeah. Had to wake up every hour at night. Mm -hmm. What I wanted to tell you something. I wanted, I wanted to invite you to my cases course before I forgot because last time I opened it in July, I think it was July 15. So now it is uh, open again, this case course. But I'm not sure about the link. If I can find the link, maybe somebody wants to join. Where was it? Give me a second, I'll find it. Yeah, so if somebody wants to join the cases course, I'll be happy to see you there. Not sure if the link works. I'll put it in the chat. If it works, that would be really nice. Hey, Kevin, thank you so much for your support. Спасибо, спасибо. Have you met a good amount of Russian speakers in Colorado? Uh, not really. Not really. Only in the Russian school where my son goes. By the way, if uh, if somebody is in Colorado, there is a pretty good Russian center there. And uh, they asked me to work there this semester to teach uh, kids Russian and to, I think to teach the adult group there. They are located in Erie, Colorado. Uh, but I had to refuse because of the pregnancy, because I wouldn't be able to walk around with a baby in November. But maybe next semester, starting somewhere in, I don't know, maybe next September or something, I'll start probably teaching there as well. That would be nice. So if you want to have some classes in person and you live in Colorado, I hope to see you there. Good morning, Greece! Dobre utro, Grecia! Привет! Six in the morning. 
early Sunday. Привет. If the course continues. What is it? What do you mean by continues? Uh, it's uh, on your own pace. So it's online course. There are lessons. And uh, you just kind of go and follow at the pace you like. It's not like you have to do it at certain times. I know that some people haven't even finished it uh, in a couple of months because they were re-listening prepositional case, re-listening accusative case before moving to instrumental, to genitive. So that's probably a good idea to master some of them first and then go back and re-listen and then move move on oh okay okay pretty nice lesson today um cover it a lot next week we're gonna read the next book it's gonna be um, Oh, what I don't I haven't picked yet. I have about 10 of different books. So we'll see. We'll see. Going to take a healthcare assignment in Denver. Yeah, I was in Denver just today. Went to the art museum. So if somebody's from Denver, let's hang out sometime. That would be really cool. Bailey, a lot of people from Colorado here. That's really cool. It's such a nice state, such a wonderful weather here, it's incredible. Почему ваш сын ходит в русскую школу? Потому что я хочу, чтобы он учил русский язык. So he goes to American school five days a week. And on Sunday, on Sunday he goes to a Russian school for three classes. There is the, the Russian language for his age. Russian culture. Now they are studying how the Russian house is organized, this traditional peasant house, is ba, and uh, Russian theater class he has. So he has Russian friends there and everything. I don't have a goal to raise an American here. I want to raise a Russian person kind of currently being in America. So I really hope he knows about Russian culture. He doesn't forget the Russian language. So I'm, I'm trying really hard. We read Russian books every day. I have like hundreds of Russian children's books. Can't stop <laughs> buying them. Uh, so yeah, I'm really concerned that he might lose kind of his Russian heritage with time. But hopefully he wouldn't but it requires a lot of effort effort from parents. Do you like America? Yeah, mostly, mostly. It, just like everywhere, there are bad things, there are good things, but in general, it's pretty good. Somebody from Indonesia. Привет! Привет! Dostoevsky is my favorite writer. I used to like him a lot. Dostoevsky now seems kind of depressing, but the book Idiot is really good. One of my favorites. Князь Мышкин. Very nice. Uh, Russia. Do you miss Russia? Yeah, and unfortunately I can't go there now because of the embassies are closed because of the virus and because of political stuff. So, and my visa expired my travel visa so the problem is that i will have to make a new one if i leave the country so that will be kind of not reasonable to to leave and uh, make another visa to come back yay do you miss the russian food a lot a lot a lot yeah we do make some food at home, 
like David, he is super proficient in making borscht. He makes borscht incredibly well. And um, we went to the Russian store today in Denver, bought some finally proper pickles. American pickles are in <laughs> they're terrible because I guess Americans don't eat pickles by themselves like alone they put them in hamburgers or in sandwiches or something uh, we eat pickles with a fork the whole thing so American ones they are very like tons of vinegar and they're just some acid I don't know so we go to a Russian store to to buy some proper <laughs> eatable uh, eatable pickles uh, okay Russian t my Russian teacher said that if you don't write a Russian in cursive people will think you're a baby who doesn't know how to write oh uh, partially true yeah I ju I was shocked that American kids don't learn cursive anymore and can't read cursive to me it is like insane, insane. Uh, in Russia, cursive is not just for writing. You will see a lot of mm, signs, a lot of a lot of fonts are in cursive, or at least include a little bit of cursive. So if you don't know mm, better, I don't know, just learn. It's not that difficult. <gasps> Mr. Putin is asking me do you actually are you actually in Colorado why are you asking why are you asking mr. president okay it's actually pretty late we've been here for an hour and a half okay if you have any questions let's go to Instagram let's go to Instagram I'm under the name real Russian club there so if you have some time Let's hang out on Instagram. Okay, I guess that's it for today. Thank you very much for learning with me. And I will um, um, go, join Telegram. Let me show this link again. If you want this PDF and you still haven't received it, uh, go to my Telegram group http dot me slash then in one word real Russian club and without do you even see it oh yeah I think it appears yeah the link will be like that real Russian club t dot me blink twenty twenty one uh the PDF will be there PDF will be there. Why is it like that? Yes. Okay. So, yeah, join this group. It's free. Tons of learning materials there, including this PDF we studied today. Okay, I guess that's it. Thank you very much. I was happy to spend this Sunday morning for Europe and uh, uh, Saturday evening for America. Thank you very much. Always a great pleasure to to learn Russian.